Good morning, YouTube. How is everybody today? I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're doing good. Uh, I'm Leo. I'll be your humble host today. And uh, I'm out on the prowl. Uh, researching some stories, getting some video. Uh, Heather is at home. She's doing some editing today. So I figured I'd get out here and get some of the get some video while she's getting some work done back there today we are in logan county west virginia uh at in, in the town of logan that's the town of logan right there we are at the old abandoned cemetery in logan now a lot of you uh who've been following our page for a while may may remember this cemetery we came up here once before uh, it's abandoned <laughs> This is where Ann Lawson, some of you may remember, may remember her story, but uh, we are back out here today. We're not here for, we're not here for Ann. We're here for another reason entirely. Um, you guys can see what kind of shape it's in, you know, back through there. The cemetery continues back through there, but it doesn't. You, you know what I'm saying? See, it's, you, you can't get back in there right now uh when we did the the video about ann and this graveyard back in the winter you could get back in there uh but check that old fence out like i mentioned in the other video like i think it was 1850s that fence was made and that thing is still standing and look at this more modern fence just rusting away but why are we here well we are here for a very unusual truly one-of-a-kind story um, I'm just gonna have a seat here if you guys don't mind I'm just gonna get comfortable since we're not I don't have a whole lot of exploring through the thorns to do today so yeah I'm gonna take that as a win if you've been following our page for a while you've you, you know quite a bit about Hatfields and McCoy's um, but there was this one instance this one time in particular what would you guys say if i told you that there was an instance where they ganged up would you believe it well it's true it really did they really did it's actually the truth and that's why we're here today that's the reason we're here at this old graveyard today okay now hibbert hatfield uh, he was part of the, the West Virginia Hatfields and was a sheriff that was actually working with a man named Jack Thurman the night of the infamous Mamie Thurman murder. Now, we'll leave a, a, a link to that in the description. We did a, a video on her uh, you know, back in the winter, so we'll leave a description to that if you guys want to check it out. Anyway, he, along with Logan, right here, Logan, Logan Police Chief Lawrence Carey, who was ironically the nephew of uh, the infamous McCoy clan leader, Randall McCoy. Uh, he was the son of Randall's sister, uh, Jenny or Jane, you know, McCoy. Uh, they were accused of killing 22-year-old 20, uh, Lawrence Avis on the streets of Logan, right here in town. Hatfield was later then found not guilty, despite testimony that he hit Avis in the head about 25 times with both a blackjack and a pistol before Avis was shot by Carey. It took a, a long time to track down how Lawrence Carey was related, and it doesn't easily show that Jenny is being a sister. When I read the story initially, it said that Lawrence Carey was related to, well, that he was the, the nephew of Randall McCoy being born to one of his sisters. It didn't say which one. So basically, I had to figure out which sister gave birth. So initially, you look at, okay, Dempsey, Farley, White, Roberts. There's no Carrie there, but I still checked them. And for some reason, Lawrence Carey doesn't have a real heavy footprint in ancestry or my heritage or anywhere else I look. So I couldn't just look up his, his bio. I'm not saying he doesn't exist there. I'm saying I had trouble finding him. So basically what I did was 
went I found them on my heritage. I did not find them on ancestry. So I found Jenny Carey, born McCoy, born in eighteen forty. She died in eighteen seventy nine, which would make her young. Um I can't find any cause of death. She was married to William Carey, and we you can see all this is spelled different. There's no E in that, there's an E in this and and this is, you know, even over here, um, discrepancies and how it's spelled. And all I found on Lawrence Carey, which is enough though, was death registry. So, you know, I wanted to make sure this was a true story. You know, some of this stuff is just exaggerated to, to make a good newspaper story back then to use the Hatfield and McCoy name, but this is a true story. So we have full name of person. We have a uh, right here, Carrie Lawrence, and he's in Logan. Office of City of Logan. His father is William Carey, his mother's Jenny McCoy, and it says shot through head, suicide, and that he was he's buried at Aracoma Cemetery, which was what the cemetery Leo is at now used to be called, um, but now it's called Old City Cemetery, I think. Either way, um, here's the date, 6-3-27. Now we have combed that cemetery several times and we have not seen his headstone. So it says Jenny had one, two, three, four, five, six children before she died. So here we have Lawrence spelled wrong, you know, the last name again or right, I don't even know. Um, has his mother is now Virginia Jane Jenny Carey or Curry born McCoy and one sibling missing over here usually it has like you know if they have any kind of census or, or any information on him but I you know he was 57 he did have eight children and that's pretty much the extent of the information that I can get on him but it was enough to prove that it's a true story so I couldn't find a lot about Hibbert Hatfield and I feel like maybe his name was something else Hubert or I don't know um, the only Hibbert Hatfield I could find was the son of Wallace Hatfield and it says that he was a coal miner and a logger and a farmer um, all through the census so I feel like that's not him but either way these stories are hard to untangle, so I'm pretty happy with how close we, we got on this one. She died as a young mother at the age of 32. For some reason, it just seems like there is always a Hatfield or a McCoy involved <laughs> in uh, a lot of these stories. And I know that you know, may seem like a coincidence, but it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, it, it not so much well there's there's a lot of them you know there's there's a lot of them they were one of the original families to settle the area or you know and so there's there's going to be a lot of them anyway but anyhow in the early morning hours of may 19th 1927 uh lawrence avis was shot and killed by lawrence carey the mccoy uh, and he was with a Hatfield, H Hibbard Hatfield. They had, like I said, this is the one time, you know, that uh, Hatfields and McCoys, they decided to, to get together and we're going to go do something together. And knowing the families, we're probably not going to be basket weaving, if you know what I mean. They're probably going to be up to no good. So this is Lawrence Avis' death certificate. So let's take a look. Lawrence Avis. Logan. 22 years old. It's horrible. So this says he was a taxi driver, and the article said he was a bus driver. So gunshot wound. And he died in about 10 minutes from blood loss. You know, that's really terrible. So over here, 
Lauren Tavis. He's born in 1904. It says taxi driver. Again, um, his parents are Cora, born Farrell, and George Avis. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight listed siblings. I don't know, you know, if these are more siblings because I can't see them. So I assume they are. So in. Let's see what he was doing in 1920s when he was killed. No, he was 16 here, so. Um, you know how it is. That's just the way things were back in the day. Might made right. Simple as that. Anyhow, the story states that 22-year-old Lawrence Avis was shot in the back at 5.30 a.m. after an altercation uh, by a state restaurant on Stratton Street right here in town. Yes, we keep coming back here, but there's, I, I know that, but there's just so many stories here in Logan that we're, we're not done yet. There, there's more. There's more. Anyway, it said that, uh, that the screams of the women in the nearby apartment building and on the streets was deafening as he shot him with a thirty eight pistol. Uh, they were both indicted for murder, and the trial... Excuse me. <clears throat> the trial took same, took place in the same courthouse that so many other proceedings have happened. The one we just showed you uh, in the last video, as a matter of fact, right down, right down here in Logan. As a side note, Hibbert Hatfield was actually a pallbearer for Mamie Thurman, Mamie Thurman's funeral. Imagine that. It can be a it can be a really small world, you know, especially in these parts. Uh, Hatfield, he was a he was a night watchman at the time, and he was found not guilty. And five years later, uh, would be working with Mamie's husband, Jack, on the legendary night that Mamie Thurman was murdered and became one of West Virginia's best-known legends, the history of West Virginia. Imagine that. He was involved in this as well. But the fact that he was found not guilty does go to show sometimes you should just see things out. Because Lawrence, the McCoy, felt defeated and that his life was over. He was escorted to his house on High Street for lunch during a trial lunch break. Where the man in his 50s shot himself in the head. He used the same gun that he used to kill Lawrence, Lawrence Avis. He left behind eight children when he killed himself. We have had so much trouble finding the victim because his name was spelled backwards in the story we found, uh, listed as Avis Lawrence. But eventually we found him too. Lawrence, the McCoy, is buried here in this old cemetery, and we've been here you know, more than once. It's a needle in a haystack to find a grave here in the winter time when the vegetation it's is you know when it's down it's going to be like the odds of finding him today in this now that the vegetation has started growing is about a million to one uh it said that he's actually buried right beside of an, another murdered sheriff uh who's named butch but uh, we're going to head out here in a second, and we're going to go find the victim in this, Lawrence Avis. Now this is the Avis Cemetery. Uh, it's another wooded one, obviously, out in the middle of nowhere. Um, you come up a little holler called Mudlick, and it's about 10 miles up uh, Mudlick. I had to bring the truck today, I had to bring my Silverado. I had to do some full wheeling for a couple of these sites, and this is one of them. Um, once you get up to a certain point, it's, yeah, it's, it's way too much for the Mustang. Uh, even the truck, I had to park it down the hill and walk the last couple hundred yards of the way. But I got lucky today. I didn't have to... I didn't have to look too much. Lawrence is right here. 
as you first come in. This is the 22 year old that was killed when, well, the Hatfields and McCoys, basically. You know, they kinda, like I said at the beginning of the story, this was the one time that the Hatfields and McCoys kinda ganged up. You know, not the whole clan, you know, one of each, but still, and this is the result. Kind of ironic, and it stands to reason. It just seems like, you know, everything they were involved in seems to kind of work out this way, doesn't it? But, uh, you know, this is just, this is another case, as a matter of fact, by the way, where, um, where the Hatfield wound up walking away, you know, after, after the murder, after the trial, after it was all said and done, walked away without even a slap on the wrist. Um, you know, I, I'm related to Hatfields and McCoys, you know, as most of you know, but it was still, it was still a little bit shady. I mean, you know, Devil Lance, when he died, he was a millionaire and you just can't really compete with, you know, it, if Bill Gates is out to get you, you're probably going to get got, you know, you can't compete with that, you know, somebody with unlimited resources, bottomless pockets, that sort of thing. It's just a, a shame that this young man, you know, 22 years old, it's a shame, isn't it? A 22 year old kid. And, you know, that's, I gr granted, you know, 22's old enough to vote, old enough to go to war and all that stuff, but you and I know most of our viewers are my age or better. <laughs> you, you and I know that a 22-year-old's a kid. But it's just, it's just sad, you know. Beautiful place. Very... Very woodsy, big tall pine trees, and he's with family. It's the Avis Family Cemetery. Uh, he's with family now. Rest in peace, Lawrence. Anyway, guys, thank y'all for coming along. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our little story. And it's just kind of, you know, to me, it's just sort of strange that, you know, when you come into one of these stories, you have all these preconceived notions about how you think the day's going to go. And at the end of the day, it doesn't go the way you think it's going to go at all. You know, it's once you're there, you're looking at the places and you're there, you're seeing the sights and you're telling the stories. You know, that's when it kind of hits home. You know, young man. It's a shame. Anyway, a couple, couple things I want to touch on before we head out. Uh, couple, we got some big news. Big news. Heather bought me a hat that says Hillbilly Files. Had my name on it. <laughs> okay, that's not the big news. All right, I'll quit. <laughs> I do like the hat, though. <laughs> uh, you guys will like this. I, I'm sure a lot of you are really going to get a kick out of this. You're going to love this. We sure did. Y'all know how. Now, I know this. I, I'm going to use a historical metaphor. A lot of you are familiar with the Spruce Goose, right? Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes, he built this great big old plane. And it was sitting there. And the whole time he was building it, everyone said it wouldn't fly. Everyone told him that. His own engineers told him that he that this plane was too big. It was too heavy. It was too flimsy. It was too weak. It'll never fly. There's no way. A YouTube page, quite frankly, is a whole lot like the Spruce Goose. Less than 1% of YouTube channels actually get monetized. So when one does, it's, it's like lightning striking. You know, it really is. It's like lightning striking. You can never tell, you know, you, you can put all the work. There's a whole bunch of channels that have really great content, but, you know, they, that the subscribers that they just don't do as well you know what i'm saying when our page the way it's doing it's growing in leaps and bounds and we are just absolutely dumbfounded by it guys we 
we have no words to thank you to say thank you to to you guys for what you've been doing you know for supporting our pages for you know the subscribers the members the super thanks from time to time you know to try and help support us we thank you we have some big news we are going to hillbilly mecca next month yes we are um heather's brother uh steve and his uh, heather and heather's sister bridget bridget lives in california and she's flying in she's going to fly in i'm going to meet her at the airport we're going to nashville tennessee we're going to elvis presley's estate we're going to go see elvis we're going to go see priscilla presley's grave we're going to go try to see johnny cash's grave uh we have got an unbelievable we're still working on our itinerary and i i can't even i don't have the words to say thank you to you guys you know there's no way we could have done you know something like that or any of this stuff you know without you guys and so i just want to say thanks and we will continue to do our very best to make all of our local friends proud of us and proud of our state. And we'll do our best to provide quality content and, you know, keep all of your friends entertained. So by all means, tell all of your friends about our page and, you know, we'll, we'll try to keep them out of your hair the best we can. <laughs> Bye-bye.